Yeah, all well, all well, uh, all well and good. Uh, had a great week of training so far. Um, we managed to get an extra session in one day, which was perfect. We don't normally have that luxury with with the girls playing WSL Championship at the weekend. So we had a great session on Monday with the majority of the players. Um, but yeah, all, all, all uh, so far so good. That's good to hear. Uh, you come into these games on on the back of two wins last month. How how does that feel? Um, it, you know, that's the start we wanted to get off to. Uh, it gives us confidence, and one of the things we want to do in you know in the next two games are, are to build on those two performances. Um, we know that the next two games, you know, will be we, will be different in terms of Slovenia and Estonia. It's great to have played uh, Estonia previously because you know we have some uh, we have some information, we have some areas that we want to improve on. So it gives us an opportunity to do that in the Estonia game, and then. All prep this week so far has been on Slovenia, and you know we look ahead to uh, we look ahead to how we want to play in that game. And like I said, build on the performances from September gives us that confidence to make sure that you know we go into game three and we start the way we want to. Uh, Slovenia, they came close to getting a, a famous result against France last month. As in, were you surprised how close they came to getting a draw? Uh, I wasn't surprised. Um, you know, I, um, I've definitely um, watched a lot of Slovenia, obviously, but I've also been a member of coaching staff, played Slovenia in the past, so I know they're a really strong nation in terms of their playing identity. And they have been an up-and-coming nation, I would say, the kind of last three or four years, and really competitive. Um, I think that it's a great challenge for us, um, and something that, you know, when we, when we played our friendly games, we played Canada, we played Denmark, we played Scotland because we wanted to play against higher rank opposition in preparation for this campaign. So I think our mentality and our preparation means that we're really excited for, for this type of fixture. Uh, in the context of the group, how important is it for you to get a result out of this game? Because it, it looks like it's going to be a battle between yourselves, Slovenia and France for that well, for the top two two places in the group. Yeah, for sure. I can I can see that from a from an outsider's point of view. You know, you can't hide away from the facts of the you know the C one, the C two, the C three. And what I do know is that with my experience of qualification campaigns, it's never normally as simple as that. First of all, so there'll be something else that happens in these ten games that you know means that it won't all be straightforward. But without a doubt, for us, it sounds cliche, but it's game three of ten. And nothing is decided in game three of 10. So in terms of our focus, we want to be better. This is, it is about game three, but it's about us wanting to qualify and compete at major tournaments. So in terms of where we're at in our journey, we're very early on in terms of that journey. It's a four-year journey, but for us, we want to keep getting better each and every game. Um, so for us, it's game three of a campaign and we want to make sure that we can perform to our best. And, and if we do that, we're really confident in terms of that performance and result. And final one from me, Gemma. Um, Hannah Kane, how has she settled in? And will we see her winning her first cap on Friday? Yeah, Hannah's, um, Hannah's been excellent. Um, fit into the group well. I was in here when you were talking to Tash and just listening to, you know, the, one of the strengths of this team is how we welcome people. I think Hannah feels welcomed. Um, she's trained really well. She's a great addition to the team in terms of providing that depth, providing that extra comp uh, competition in the team and that's what we wanted to do we want to keep doing that uh, I'm sure we'll see Hannah at some point I'm not sure if it'll be Friday yet but I'm sure we'll see her at some point uh, Gemma um, thank you for your time Diolch about Poblok on Friday good luck on Friday Yeah. Diolch um, Sean here from Scoria Hi, Gemma you okay? Hello yes how are you? First of all how's the Welsh coming along? <laughs> Yes, yeah, good. I've been learning. I was at uh, I was at secondary school last week, learning some new. I'm learning colours at the moment. Melon, cock. I'm I'm on colours. I know that sounds very basic, but I'm taking it a step at a time, as you know. I love it. You'll be fluent before you know it. Um, <laughs> um just a couple of months from me. We spoke with Jess Fishlock yesterday, and she said something quite interesting that there was also a bit of a nervousness about the opening two games of the campaign, and she feels now since you guys have have met up this week that the nerves have settled and you know the campaign is well underway do you sense that from the players as well yeah absolutely you know for for me every international game you know regardless of whether it's the third seed or the sixth seed it's going to be a tough game there's never any easy fixtures and they all bring up different challenges so I think in the September window the nerves were probably there because we knew the potential that we had but we haven't quite you know delivered that in a, in a qualification game so now we 
got those two under our belts for sure. I think we go into the third game knowing what we're capable of, but also looking forward to who we want to be as a team, you know, moving forward. It's the most successful start that a Welsh team has had to a, camp, a qualifying campaign, six points on the board already. I know it's the cliche word momentum, but how important is it with these next two games that you keep the momentum going? Because it's such a long campaign as well. Yeah, absolutely. The momentum is important, but it, I think it's also important not to get too carried away. We don't need to focus on, you know, the what ifs. We need to focus on playing on Friday after that game, recovering well, playing on Tuesday and then assessing where we're at from there. We, you know, we planned uh, the fixtures in terms of we wanted to have those fixtures in September to get us off to that start. And it's all well and good, you know, planning the fixtures, but getting off to the start, I think that's where the players need to take a, a huge amount of credit in terms of delivering the game plan. On Friday, you know, our plan is to see how well we can deliver our game plan because with the strengths that we have and the players that we have, we know we can get a successful performance, you know, if we do that. Yeah. I wanted to ask quickly um, about Morgan Rogers. She's been added to the squad as a training player. She's another young, exciting talent that's sort of come through the ranks. What does she bring, you know, to the training sessions and what is she like as a character to have around the place? Yeah, so Morgan is, um, Morgan's fantastic. You know, she's a young player, but when she comes into the environment, she brings enthusiasm. Um, she brings an appetite for learning. I've actually just come from a, from a meeting with her, just talking to her about how she's settling in. And, and for us, it is about now, but it's about preparing the next generation of players. And if we can bring more and more play, players into this environment to learn from our senior players, that's going to be a real healthy cycle for us. So Morgan is learning a lot in the environment, but she also brings a real competitive edge. I think one of the advantages of being a young player is sometimes not thinking too much. So in training, she certainly um, raises the, the standard in terms of that competitive element. Um, and she's just a really open-minded, you know, good youngster. And, and for her, she's just started university. She's just moved away from home. So we're looking at how we support her both on and off the pitch and having her in this environment. Um, I think we can do both of those really well, you know, to support her with her development. And final one from me, I'm intrigued to know more about this book club that you've apparently introduced and what's on the, the reading list for this camp. Yeah, well, the highlight of my week so far this week is I've ordered a book for a player. Um, it was a Pippa Grange book called Fearless. And I kept going to reception to see if it had been delivered. I actually had it delivered to my own house in Leeds. So <laughs> that was the first uh, error that I've made this week. So I do have a book at home in Leeds. But I, th I think for me, you know, the... Um, the education around, you know, the Pippa Grange book, for example, the Fearless book, she's got really nice messages in there around mentality and high performance. And a lot of the girls are really thirsty for that kind of information. So being able to, you know, recommend books to them. I read a lot, um, a lot around high performance, a lot around people who are successful and that winning mentality and breeding that within the team. And, you know, the more we can understand about each other the more we will be able to perform. So, you know, the feelings that we get when we're under pressure, the feelings that we need to, you know, build self-belief, it's, it's all part of that. And the players here absolutely, you know, buy into it. I don't know if they're just like humouring me. I mean, they could be. You know, I'm the manager and I say, do you want to read a book? And they say yes. But I do feel like we have some really good conversations so that when we're off the pitch, we're, we're constantly, um, one of the sayings we have is leave no stone unturned. And for us, we're having those performance conversations on the pitch and off the pitch, which... Yeah, which is brilliant and can only help us moving forward. Amazing. I'll add it to my bookshelf here, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank you yeah. very much, Dior. Just all that. Um, Beth, from Hey, Gemma, you all right? Hi, Beth. Um, listen, the Klopp, last, the Klopp said last night after hit their um, win that dirty points are almost are often the most important. And it kind of reminded me of that 1 0 win against Estonia obviously I'm not saying it was dirty at all but what I'm saying is that you know it wasn't perhaps what you wanted are you trying to kind of within coming into Wales is almost take the pressure off having to be this team maybe that everyone wants and just focus on your growth and and, and just getting the points as you go along kind of thing yeah you know Ben I think it's a balance of both of those things so when when you work in developing as a team for me it's about getting the best out of the players that you have and playing them in their best positions first of all and that might seem like a really simple answer but for me when you've got players with such quality getting them to deliver consistently in their position is the first thing but the second thing is around that ongoing performance so we have key performance indicators as a team that we want to benchmark ourselves against because we know if we benchmark ourselves against them we can be successful so you know regardless of the result it's always going to be the performance because the, the correlation between the performance and the result 
is normally pretty close. And I think, you know, when, when Klopp says that, for me, the, the Estonia game was a 1-0 win. But the things that we've taken from that, we've taken the three points, most importantly, but the, the work that we've taken in terms of how we want to be better in this camp is, is so invaluable for us. 700 passes, I think that keeps on being repeated this week. So, um, and then another interesting point from yesterday was Fionn Morgan said about the fact that she's gone full time at Bristol. It's allowed her to come to Wales and not break down physically. So, therefore, do you feel that as women's um, football in the UK becomes more professional, will that help countries like Wales more because they're not used to maybe having the full time players, perhaps like a, like in England, who are kind of used to it? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's. Uh, you know, I spoke about this last week a little bit in terms of that individual program for each player is so important. So for Fiona moving into the full time program, her physical robustness, um, her technical tactical ability will be accelerated in terms of the environment that she's in. Um, you know, the championship provides a really competitive place as well as you know the WSL. But for us to be able to access that as a group is so important to this team's development. And, and do you think that will therefore give, you know, in, in other teams, maybe it's less of a, a, a percentage rise. Do you think that will give Wales even a bigger lift with, under your reign as well? Yeah, absolutely. And I think we see that every day here in training. You know, in the, um, in the September camp, as a whole group, every single player impacted the training. And we spoke about it as a group that if we can raise the standard in every single training session, every single player. So there are no gaps. You know, there are not a group of players like you, Sophie Ingle, Jess Fishlock, who are playing at the, you know, the best clubs in the world. And then there's the other group. I think both of those groups now are getting to a level where it's really pushing on the team and really creating that competitive edge. I think, actually, that kind of leads on to my next question beautifully. Um, the BBC Sport picked out Carrie Jones as one of the one, one of five youngsters to look out for. And, and I looked at that with genuine, obviously I'm a journalist, but I looked at that with pride because we don't often see these young athletes from Wales coming through unless they are maybe like a Jess Fishlock or Sophie. And that and that's exactly what you're saying, isn't it? That there's this depth coming through and, and some stars coming through as well. Yeah, absolutely. That's the most exciting thing. You know, when you, when you look at Carrie, when you look at Esther Morgan, when you look at Morgan Rogers, we've got a real strong base of young players there that are, are, are now in some of the, the top clubs early on. You know, in terms of that full-time environment, they're making the transition. And for someone like Carrie to be in that daily environment and to be progressing in that daily environment, and then when she's coming here, it's a very similar environment, so they're, they're not too different. So for her, that consistency, you know, I can see why, yeah, that, that she definitely came out in those top five players to be looking for, and it is immensely proud for us as a team. And last word from me, obviously, we spoke to Sophie about this, but 3,000 tickets already sold for Tuesday. Does that, is that, does that excite you? Is that pressure? Is that, is that all the kind of things that you want to kind of help build this team as well? Yeah, for sure. It excites me. Um, the, it definitely doesn't make me feel any kind of pressure. It excites me because I know what this team will be like in front of more and more fans. When we had the uh, Kazakhstan game at home, it was incredible. So to even think about what it's going to be like next Tuesday and the power that they give to the team, but the way we connect to them. You know, I mentioned it before, the anthem was incredible at Parky Scarlet's. The anthem at Cardiff City will go to a next level and you can never underestimate that support. It means everything to me. It means everything to the team. And um, it's such an exciting feeling and we want to make sure that we make them proud. Um, and, and that's our aim. Amazing. Listen, good luck for Friday. Oh, thank you. See you after that. Hi, Gemma. I hope you're very well. Amazing. Yeah, I love our Wales Women Press Conference because we just get such good um, book recommendations. So uh, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so next week then, 200th game. Are uh, your family coming down from, from up north to, to support you? And I'm assuming they'll, be, they'll all be wearing red. They will be. They're, uh, they're a group of family members. There's 12 in total and they all have Granger 1 on their shirt. So if you're at the game, if you see the Granger 1 crew, they are there supporting the long journey down. And that's great, uh, great news. And we've got the uh, mentioned already, you know, the 700 passes. Um, games aren't won and lost on paper, as we all know. But how pleased are you with with the way it's going? You know, is the style of play that you want fully adopted yet? Or, or can we expect more? Um, more? Yeah, so I think from an in-possession point of view, you know, I've never coached in a game um, where a team's had over 700 passes. Um, we looked into uh, that stat and... You know, I said this before, I said this to the players. It's not about how many number of passes, it's about the, the points on the board. However, when you're developing a style of play, it's so important to know who you are and, what, and I guess the, 
you know, not to underestimate anything that you do. So in that Estonia game, the score was 1-0. We had over 700 passes and we created 25 chances. That's an incredible delivery of a game plan. We want to be better um, at finishing some of those chances. But when you play against a team with a low block, I think that respect of the opposition and, and understanding who you're playing against. You know, Estonia was so well set up. Uh, we knew they would be. So for us to have those kind of stats from that kind of game, it helps us to build belief. And we'll take that belief, um, you know, into the type of team we want to be. In possession, it's going to keep taking time. You know, you're going to see um, more of that Friday, more of it Tuesday, and we'll keep developing it. But for sure, the out possession style is, um, is strong and it's a foundation and, and it has been since I've been here. Um, but the in possession style of play, yes, you will see more. And yes, we're looking, you know, to build on that and consistently get better. You mentioned there's some of the other kind of stats you're keeping an eye out for, I suppose, to build a story really of, of how, how the team is progressing. Are there any other areas you're, you're really, you know, um, focusing on? Yeah, so for us, we have a, um, we have a set of metri- uh, we have a matrix of stats around benchmarks. And what we do is we benchmark ourselves against the teams that have qualified previously. So that's a real performance indicator for us. So we have a set of benchmarks, um, number of passes being one of them, number of chances being created. And there are a whole lot of, um, there's, a, there's about 20 different benchmarks. But for us, from an in-possession and out-possession point of view, it gives us a real guide of are we travelling in the right direction? Because yes, um, you know, stats don't always equal three points, but they'll, they'll be a real key indicator or a real strong indicator of the type of performance, you know, and like, you know, the, more, the better the performance, the more chance you have got of getting the results. So, we, you know, we bear that in mind. Can you give us an idea of any of those countries that you're kind of using the, the benchmarks from previously? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So we are uh, we're using it from the teams that have finished first um, in qualification for the previous World Cup campaign. So we're benchmarking ourselves against all of those teams. So the last time there was a there was a World Cup campaign, the team that finished first, we're using their stats to benchmark ourselves off because we want to we want to do that we want to um, set our sights and I think that links into what we talk about our mentality you know we play in high rank opposition we're also benchmarking ourselves against them because that's the direction we want to go in we want to we want to qualify we want to compete at major tournaments not just once but on a consistent basis and tactics then so how how I mean you know presumably they change you know obviously you know depending on who you're playing but what do you think are the tactics that maybe give away that a, a team is playing under yourself they're not obviously a bit of a bit of an attacking focus but how much of that I suppose depends on who you're playing yeah for sure uh, I think for me the our philosophy as a team is to make sure that we can all deliver our individual strengths and that's in and out of possession and that you know any team that I coach it's my responsibility to make sure that the players can deliver those strengths. They're really clear on what the game plan is. Um, but most importantly, they have that freedom within the structure. So we have a really clear structure in terms of the formation we want to play. We can adapt that formation. But within that structure, there's a real freedom to give players the, you know, the decision making, certainly in possession to be able to be themselves um, and also create the environment where that's safe to do so. So there are going to be times when we'll make mistakes. But for us, it's about making sure people feel comfortable to deliver their strengths, um, both in and out of possession. And also, I'd say that it's a mix of mentality as well. One of the strongest things about this team is their mentality, how hard they work, the grit, the determination. And that should be a, almost like a non-negotiable for us in any game, as well as the tactics. And last one for me quickly. Um, Helen Ward, then, she is approaching her 100th Wales cap. How important is she to this Wales squad at the moment? Yeah, she- She's incredibly important for, for a number of reasons, both on and off the pitch. You know, Helen is a, an incredible leader and the responsibility that she takes off the pitch as well as on the pitch. You know, her standards are so high. Um, I'm thinking about it from the training session this morning. We did a finishing session and just her mentality around uh, who she is as a player, the habits that she has. I see the younger players looking up to her a lot um, on the pitch. And then off the pitch, she provides that um, she provides that sounding board for younger players. I've seen her sat with two or three players this week, and she's sharing all her experience and she's imparting it on them for you know for their future development. So she's she's absolute leader in, in the group, both on and off the pitch. Great, thanks, and good luck for these games. Thank you, Jack. Jack Eddie and Fanny Phil Blanche from Press Association. Hi, Gemma. Uh, it, it's been mentioned uh, that Slovenia lost to France, of course, and. Uh, do you think that they may well have expected to lose that game? But the, the fact that the, the reason they, they lost it in close fashion, do you think that puts a little bit more pressure on, on them going into the game? Are they playing a bit of catch-up? 
Yeah, I think, you know, we well, we sit with six points um, and they obviously sit with with the three points. So I think I think for them, in terms of their mentality, I, I'm sure they, they realise that it's very early on in the campaign. You know, it's nothing's ever won and lost game three, game four. But I think for, uh, for us and, and our approach, it still goes back to that, you know, game at a time. Um, but for them, you know, I'm sure they... I'm sure they were disappointed uh, not to pick up a point against you know France because it was it was such a you know close time close result in terms of the, the time that France scored their third goal. But um, I think that can almost teach it teaches us a lesson that anything can happen in a game at any point. So from the first minute to the very very last whistle, it's so important that we stay focused and, and you know that can be our mentality. And just finally, you you mentioned that you're on the start of this four year journey. Um, obviously, there's very fine lines in elite sport. I mean. What, what, what do you see as the difference to sort of qualifying, getting over that qualification line, doing that as and what's not been achieved before? Yeah, for sure. I think, um, you know, for me, it's about mentality nine times out of ten. I think it's how you think about things. I think it's how you prepare. I think it's how you create environments to make sure that you're constantly improving. For me, continuous improvement is, is the absolute key. So for us as a team, when, when I took this position, I knew what the out of possession strengths were, but I could see some real opportunities in possession. And that's what we've been working really hard on because ultimately goals win your games. So yes, not conceding wins your games as well. Um, but that foundation was here. So we built on that foundation, but really focused on, okay, how can we look to get the strengths? How can we deliver? Because that ultimately is how we'll qualify by in possession, making sure we can execute the, the game plan and you know use the players that we have to the best of our ability. Thanks, Gemma. All the best this week. Thank you. Well, Jeff Phil, uh, thanks again. I'm going to get this sent out to you uh, shortly. I'll see if you can keep it tomorrow. That'll be brilliant. And I'll send some Zoom details for the post-match after the game in Slovenia as well. So, Jeff Powell, we'll speak to